<clears throat> hey, this is a trendy socialite. I hope all is well with you. It is time for my thoughts on chapter 2, um, <clears throat> book of Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs um, as part of our A New Year, A New You series. Um, I actually, uh, a lot of chapter 2 really spoke to me um, and just and blessed me and I, I really felt like <clears throat> uh, about half of chapter 2 was about the promises of God and um, what he will do and how he will keep us if we follow him and his commandments and that okay. sort of thing. <clears throat> so starting at verse 3, basically I highlighted verses 3 through 12, like all, all that was good to me. Um, starting at verse 3, yes if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come understanding, knowledge and understanding. Um, <clears throat> for me, those first three verses, those three verses, talk about how we ob obtain wisdom from God. And, you know, there are two ways basically to do that, I feel. One is it comes directly from God, um, like it's God-given. And then the second is in our search for it, in our pursuit of it. And um, as with anything in life, um, you know, old folks used to say anything worth having is worth working for. It's the same thing with wisdom. Um, God knows us <laughs> better than we know ourselves. He knows how humans are. And if he were to just lay everything in our lap, would we really appreciate it? Would we really um, use it to its fullest uh capabilities so we he wants us to pursue he wants to know that we are hungry for him that we are hungry for his wisdom and um, he just as we pursue the thing other things in life that we want to pursue like careers and education and stuff and relationships he wants us to have that same pursuit where it talks about um, just like we seek her as silver and hidden treasures he wants us to have that same persistent dogmatic pursuit of him and of his wisdom and of understanding him and his mindset and how he thinks because when, when we put on as people would talk about the mind of Christ then we see things differently we see and we see things that we wouldn't see if we didn't have the mind of Christ um, <clears throat> I mean it says here in my life application Bible the pathway to wisdom is strenuous when we are on the path we discover that true wisdom is God's and that he will guide us and reward our sincere and persistent search he will he always I mean the Bible is clear talks specifically about he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him and when we're seeking his wisdom when we're seeking his guidance that he rewards that um, it may not be um, in tangible ways that you can readily see but if you're if you're really in tune to God, if you're really in tune to yourself and changes in your life, and if you're really reflective, then you'll be able to see those changes manifest themselves. Um, starting at verse 7, <clears throat> he stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. And this is a part... <coughs> When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you, understanding will keep you, um, to deliver you from the way of evil. Now that right there, that's a promise. That is God's promise. When we allow wisdom to enter our hearts and when seeking knowledge and getting God's knowledge and, and understanding God's mind is pleasant to us, meaning that's good for us, meaning that that's what we want, then discretion will preserve you understanding will keep you oh my god how awesome is that and it will deliver you from a, the way of evil I mean <clears throat> when we seek God he will <laughs> preserve us and he'll steer us away from evil 
every time all the time I promise you wisdom is definitely a growth process it is not something even um, on January 1st after we've read all 31 chapters of Proverbs um, we're not going to be all knowing wise ones sitting up on a hill somewhere with the Indian style you know dispensing sage wisdom and advice to the to those that come up the mountain to see us it's not necessarily going to be like that it's a growth process you're going to probably have to read this again I would suggest that you read it if not every every year I mean every six months at least every year but as we we read this um, one it teaches us respect for God two it teaches us about the choices that we need to make and we do life is life is full of choices and we have to make the right choices and when we make choices <clears throat> that are right just like here it talks about how discretion and understanding will keep and preserve us and will steer us away from evil but when we don't make the right decisions unknown and understand that if we repent which means that we're saying we're sorry and if we stop doing it then um we can definitely we can learn from our errors and recover and that's what life is all about I mean God doesn't expect perfection he understands that we're human and excuse me the only one that is perfect was Jesus but when we make mistakes we ask God for forgiveness he does we forgive ourselves and we vow not to do that again we vow to to really try not to make those same mistakes again um, <clears throat> and just like I talked about yesterday in the video that we can um, in James 1 and 5 it talks about if we want wisdom ask for it and God will give it to us liberally he absolutely will and this talks about when when we ask him for it and we allow it to enter in our hearts that it really does keep us from a path of destruction and then in the other verses like 13 through um, through 16 well actually through the end it talks about you know the ways of the wicked and um, the things that immoral people do and I don't know about my, my females my sisters out there when they got to verse 16 to talk about delivering us from the immoral woman and the, from the seductress that sort of thing uh, I was like dang it's like that but especially in the times there was a lot of that going on um, and there's a lot <clears throat> in here about immoral women and harlots and seductresses and foolish women and that's those sorts of things and I really think um, I like to believe that it's not God beating up on us and not God belittling us and, and making us um, look like classless second-class subservient um, when people that don't know any better or you know anything like that I think that's his I th I think that's his wake-up call to us as women because we have such great responsibility in life um, we give life we maintain life we sustain life we do things that men can't do and I think because God understands the weight of of the calling that we have as women because it is a calling if you're a woman you are you got to be called to be a woman to put up with some of the stuff that we do absolutely have to be called to be a woman not saying not dissing my men because I love y'all I love you but I mean you have to be also called to be a, a woman definitely and I really think God is saying in <clears throat> in this don't don't be like this don't be this woman um, that is not the business at all one thing um, that I talked about in the scripture in my, in my life application Bible is that two of the most difficult sins to resist are pride and sexual immorality both are seductive pride says I deserve it sexual desire says I need it <laughs> pride appeals to the empty head sexual enticement to the empty heart that right there I'm gonna have to put that underneath because that wow that um, sat like 
spoon right in my lap. Um, <clears throat> it just really makes you think, and and it talks. Um, it just really makes me think about why I want certain things and why I feel like I need certain things, and and it just really makes me evaluate. Um, all of that, what I say that I need, what I say that I want, why do I want it, is it coming from a place of pride, and is that, does that mean that there's some sort of void in my life, void in my head or in my heart, um, <clears throat> that I need to, to look at, I need to work on. And that's when, you know, a lot of times people talk about you being a whole person when you're when you're entering into a relationship I think this really made me think okay are there some things are there some issues I never thought that I was a prideful person but are there some issues of pride it, and pride doesn't always have to do with monetary or um, wealth um, or anything like that it can it can have to do with other things um, non materialistic things as well but are there some things that I'm prideful about and is that um, a sign that there's something missing? I would really be interested to hear what you all think about chapter 2. Um, so be sure to leave your comments below. You all take care. Take care and y'all be blessed. Bye.